Dave will not be with us tonight, so I'll be going through the agenda. The first topic on the agenda is a preliminary financial report for, for fiscal year 2015-2016. The report has not been audited yet, so we're not ready to say it is our final report. Having said that, does anyone have any questions? Of, and, and I'm going to butcher your last name. With us tonight is Michelle, and her first name. Could you pass the little off? Pass the little off, who is our new accountant. Welcome, Michelle. Uh, does anyone have any questions or comments about Michelle's report? <clears throat> okay. I'm sorry, you did. No, 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 I didn't. Okay. Other than to Good job. Thank you very much. Yes. Yeah, and, and the questions that were, were previously asked, and they asked a couple in the office taken care of. And can you say congratulations on your baby as well? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Congratulations on the baby, yes. Thank you for getting this done. And, and, I'm sorry, Michelle, this will be audited shortly? Yes, the auditors will be here um, the week of November 14th. November 14th. And how long are they here for, Michelle? They anticipate being in the office for three days. Three days. Um, but they will do work before and after in their own offices. Okay. Great. Thank you. And then they'll be put back last year. Yes. Um, I'm not sure if they'll make the December meeting. I'm hoping they will. Um, if not, it'll be January. I'm not sure how long it usually takes them. Um, being a smaller village, it probably should be December. Okay. Thank you. Do they normally come to the meeting? Do they give us a presentation with a synopsis. Okay, thank you. Uh, next on the agenda, uh, after Michelle finished off with the AUD report, uh, the preliminary uh, financial report on fiscal 2015-2016, she turned her attention to the financial report for the first four months of fiscal year 2016-2017 and provided us with a preliminary report on that. Does anyone have any questions of Michelle at this time? I don't know if, I don't know if you covered this highway street maintenance equipment. Seems to be, I'm sorry, I should have asked you this previously. <coughs> What's the number? It's 5110200. Mm -hmm. um, it seems to be high for this time of the year. So that, the majority of that payment is for a new Bobcat. The first payment oh, that's of the Bobcat okay. that was purchased. Uh, 11700 of the 12000 that you see there for the Bobcat. <coughs> Does it all come? The Bobcat payment, does it all come out of that account or does it come No, it's split. Between that account and water or sewer? Water. Water. Now this is a, a, one of those three-year payments, right? This is, is this a, a the end of the lease, the end of the three-year payment on it? Because we picked up, we finished paying something and picked up the truck. I'm sorry, I should, I, should, I know you asked us to ask this I'm not sure which year. Are we, I, I don't know if we've got one more year or not. We can look that up for you. Nice work, Michelle. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> uh, you don't need to stay with us anymore. <laughs> if you'd like to go home. Thank you. Not Thank you. No, you don't stay. <laughs> you, you can go home too. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Thank you for all the explanations. No problem. You made our lives a lot easier. If you have any questions after, please feel free to email me. And I'll we're more than happy to answer them. Great, okay. thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, thank you. Uh, next is uh, the parking committee recommendations for winter parking. Um, winter parking, as you may know, is normally available at the boulevard, and the parking committee is recommending, in addition, uh, parking uh, winter parking in front of Mayor's Park, the diagonal parking, uh, the south side of New Street, 
adjacent to the boat club entrance. Overnight only parking at the uh, municipal lot, that would be from 9 p.m. to 8 a.m. And parking at the dead end portion of Marion Avenue. <coughs> uh, so that was their recommendation. Uh, do we have any uh, discussion on this? Um, <coughs> I have a question at the boat club parking. Uh, so if we allow that uh, parking there, then the boat club members don't have. Oh no, they, they park on their lot. They, they park I on think the so. property. Yeah. So that, that those spaces are basically public spaces. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> so they're, so we're going to put signs at these new places saying what they're parking allowed here or something. <coughs> like well, we're going to be discussing a resolution mm -hmm. on that. I don't know whether any of these areas. Sorry, I know that Steve, correct me on this. The boulevard has signage for winter parking as you come yeah. from your house. It and, does, yeah. Yeah, there is there are, there is signage there. I don't know if there's signage at Marion Avenue um, that's been previously designated as winter parking. No, is that by the, the uh, by the garden apartments there? At, at the end of Marion Avenue, where it dead ends, where it crosses Benedict. Oh, okay. Okay. At, in front of the garden apartments, that that is the area that people were in the past permitted to uh, park overnight when there were situations where you had to get your car off the street. But I can certainly look into that if we need signage. The village plows that, or that is done by the department? I don't know the answer to that. And it's also, <coughs> it's also, cool about it. it's also allowed um, on Morris, on Morris by the street. It we don't own that. We don't own that, but everybody seems to. Park there. Park there. And oh. that belongs to the school? Or oh, yeah. that belongs to the school? Yeah. That's always been a place for people. Yeah. Right. They don't seem to have a problem with it. It's just been going on. Right. I don't think Haldane has ever indicated that it's a problem, but that's not, not part of our declare. Right. Okay. Right. For us to say. We, we won't they declare it. They wouldn't be using that in the winter anyway because they don't use any of the fields. No. And in fact, the school does plow there every once in a while when yeah. enough cars get out of the way and they'll come through and plow. Yeah, they can come through and plow. Yeah. So, no, uh, I have uh, two questions about the general recommendations that are being made which for winter parking. Is, is signage required and who plows Marion? So, you'll have in your packages a legal notice. This is required by the village. Um, the legal notice says beginning November 15th, 2016 and continuing through <coughs> November 15th, 2017, seasonal parking restrictions will take effect pursuant to sections 126-15 and 126-36 of the village code. The village code specifies a different time period and that's why the legal notice is important. The, I believe the village code says December 1st to March 31st. And the, the rest of the notice, which is what has been given before, is there's a call-in program where people are, uh, it is recommended that people call in to the phone number, which is 845-747-SNOW, S-N-O-W, <coughs> to determine whether or not they have to uh, remove their cars from the street because of a storm condition or a previous storm condition. Um, the, what we've done here is identified in the second paragraph the seasonal off street parking on Kebel Avenue and the south side of the boulevard. Signs will mark those designated areas. And the question is, do we want to update this to include uh, New Street? I would say yes. Uh, Mayor's yes. Park? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. We have the uh, municipal lot. And the Times on the municipal lot again. 
It's from 9 p.m. to 8 a.m. And it's free. And it's free. <clears throat> and the other one. Marion Avenue. Marion Avenue. Thank you. More information, the better. Okay. And <coughs> we have also updated the uh, legal notice because this also includes not just winter parking, but also sidewalk clearing. So we've updated this to include the wording from the resolution that we passed previously about keeping sidewalks free of snow and ice uh, within 18 hours at the end of the storm and from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. in front of commercial, commercial uh, establishments and commercial parking lots. So do I have a motion to um, publish this updated winter parking legal notice? Can we update it? We'll add the what? Fair Street, New Street, Marion, and Municipal Parking Lot information. Uh, municipal Parking Lot, New Street, Mayor's Park, and Marion. Okay. Okay, so. <coughs> make a motion to publish the legal notice as amended. Okay. And any com any discussion on that? Anyone? Excuse a second? Me. I'll second. Thank you, Lynn. All in favor? Aye. 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 No one opposed. Excellent. Uh, the next uh, topic on the agenda is actually the parking on Marion Avenue. Uh, this resolution has been passed in. This resolution has been. P-A-S-S-E-D in the P-A-S-T, just in case gotcha. uh, enunciation is not Add a couple of extra words in. Clear enough. I'm and for the Putnam County Spelling Bee. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yes. So this specifically deals with Marion Avenue south of Benedict Road. It says, where is the village of Cold Spring on street parking regulations, blah, 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 blah. Snow, whereas snow clearing activity in the vicinity of Marion Avenue and Benedict <coughs> Road could be better conducted and coordinated with local residents if the village's <coughs> on-street parking regulations are suspended on the dead-end portion of Marion Avenue south of Benedict Road to allow parked vehicles to remain thereon, which seems to imply that it will not be plowed. That's how I read that. Now, therefore, be it resolved as follows, the village board of the village of Cold Spring hereby suspends on-street parking regulation for the dead end portion of Marion Avenue south of uh, Benedict, Benedict Road until April 15, 2017, and a copy of this resolution shall be posted at Village Hall <coughs> and provided to the Village Police Department forthwith. Um, and so, would anyone like to make a motion to um, approve this resolution? So moved. Thank you. Discussion. Um, should it say from November 15th to April 15th, or we're just going from now until April 15th? Uh, it's a good question. Can we approve it contingent upon sure. Mary's? Mm -hmm. uh, sure, I'll second that. That's good. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second, um, and we've had discussion. So this is a roll call vote. Uh, Francis Murphy? Yes. Marie Early, yes. Lynn Miller? Yes. Steve Velodo? Yes. And Mayor Mirandi is uh, absent. Next topic, new business. Um, you may remember that the HDRB has received a SHPO grant <coughs> for updating of the standards, the 1999 uh, design standards. They have crafted an agreement with Stephen Tilly Architect to, for Stephen Tilly to do that work. Um, and what we have tonight for discussion is a rider to the letter of agreement, which is um, about five or six pages into you, oh, you may actually have it right there. I have it five or six pages. And the rider will be incorporated into and made part of the letter of agreement. The rider supplements and modifies the letter of agreement. 
um, if the rider conflicts with the terms in a letter of agreement, the terms of its rider will control. <coughs> Goes on to say that the village has entered into a, uh, a contract for grants with SHIBO. Uh, SHIBO's agreement to provide funding uh, to the village. Uh, SHIBO's ready, willing, and able to complete the project pursuant to the terms contained in the SHIBO master contract. Um, whereas pursuant to that certain resolution adopted by the village board as of October, August 25th, 2015, a copy of which is annexed tier two, the village accepted the proposal submitted by architect and we will attach the resolution of the board from tonight to this um, rider. Whereas the architect has submitted that certain letter agreement dated as of the Thank you, Lynn. October, thank you. October 21st, right in there. Mm -hmm. Yes, good eye. <laughs> October 21st, 2016, wherein the services to be performed by architect are detailed. Now, therefore, master contract incorporated here, herein, the architect acknowledges having read the, uh, the master contract. The parties agree that the letter agreement shall be subject and <laughs> subordinate to the master contract. If for any reason <coughs> master contract shall terminate uh, prior to the termination of the letter agreement, the letter agreement shall thereupon be terminated and the village shall not be liable to the architect for the cost of services performed after such termination. The terms, covenants, and conditions of the master contract are incorporated in the letter agreement by reference. Uh, hold harmless, architect shall indemnify, defend, and hold harmless the village and ship up from any and against all claims, losses, damages, expenses, and liability, including without limitation reasonable attorney's fees, which may be asserted against village or shipo, which village or shipo may be forced to pay out, become liable. All notices, communications, all notices and communications on the alert agreement shall be made and sent to Stephen Tilly, who provides his mailing address. <coughs> with a copy to First Catanium, May, and Milligram, and Ryder. Termination for cause if architect fails to comply. Um, the village may provide written notification to architect of its breach <coughs> and set a specific amount of time to cure said breach, not to exceed 60 days. Should architect fail to cure said breach, the village shall be entitled to unilaterally terminate the letter agreement if the letter agreement is terminated for cause, architect shall be entitled to payment only for services properly performed as determined by the village at their sole discretion and further shall be liable to the village for any loss or damages sustained by reason of architect's culpable conduct or failure to perform its obligations under the master contract or this agreement. Non-assignment clause, this agreement may not be assigned to anyone. Records. Architect shall establish and maintain complete and accurate books, records, documents, accounts, and other evidence directly pertinent to architect's performance of services. No contractual relationship between architect and SHPO. It is expressly understood and agreed that nothing contained herein or in the RFP or in the letter of agreement shall create any contractual relationship between architect and SHPO. Non collusion. Architect hereby warrants and represents that this agreement has not been solicited or secured directly or direct, indirectly in a manner contrary to the laws of the state of New York. Uh, use of village documents during the period of time that this agreement is in effect. Any documents provided to architect by the village um, <coughs> shall remain the property of the village and shall be returned to the village upon request of the village or in any event at the time such items are no longer necessary to complete the services. Architect shall maintain the confidentiality of such documents. Architect shall only use docu village documents for purpose of contemplated in this agreement and for no other purposes whatsoever. Entire agreement. This, this agreement and the attachments here too completely express the full agreement between the village and architect. No waiver. No waiver of any term or condition of this agreement by any party shall be valid unless so set forth in writing signed by the, uh, the parties there too. Counterparts. 
This agreement shall be executed in any number of counterparts, including fax or scanned copies, each of which shall be an original, but all of which together shall constitute one instrument. So, um, <coughs> does anyone <coughs> have any questions about the resolution, sorry, the rider or the letter agreement? HDRB saying that they agree with all of this? Oh, uh, I, there have been a series of emails mm -hmm. from Alice Galenz, Alice, so, so Al so and so Kathleen. We strongly recommend that the village sign this as quickly as possible because the SHPO grant had a time, is time bound, mm -hmm. and we don't want to take up more time than, than necessary. Does the grant cover the entire amount? I didn't think it did originally. For the um, I thought it covered all of Stephen Tilley's work. Okay. But it does. It doesn't cover all of that which I don't believe it covers all of that which the HDRB wishes to accomplish. Mm -hmm. I think there are some additional things, and this is just the standards. <coughs> it's not the design guidelines. Okay. And this is going to the letter. To be completed in 12 months from when we start, when we sign it. I think actually the clock is ticking from earlier. Okay. <coughs> and the total of fourteen thousand two hundred dollars. I see in the letter. Um. That's what I read. Yeah. Sounds good. So, um, would someone like to make a motion to uh, approve uh, Dave's signing of the rider? And when he returns, um, excuse me. The motion. This you, did, you uh, disclosed this as a discussion item under new business. This has not been posted. It's not part of your agenda, and it hasn't been it seventy-two is. hours notice. And this isn't a special meeting. You can't it vote. It is part of our agenda. It's under new business. It's not. Po it hasn't been posted. It's okay. not on the website. <coughs> it's not on the notice board. It's yeah. not as a resolution. Yeah. Your concern is noted. So um, the, the signature would not occur until Monday at the earliest. So Fran, you make a motion to approve Dave's signature. A second from anyone? A second. second. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 No, not opposed. <coughs> Very good. Uh, okay. And then next is resolution. Ah, there's a Waterman break in Nelsonville. Um, to fix the Waterman break, it requires permission from the DOT to open up 301. And so what we have here is a uh, secret negative debt on the uh, emergency repair, identifying this as an unlisted action. You have the short EAF form. And uh, so the resolution tonight is, uh, whereas the Village Board has considered a project to make emergency repairs to the water main on Route 301 at 252 Main Street, the Village was directed by the New York State DOT to make application for a State Street opening permit on Route 301, as the Village of Cold Spring is the owner of the water main, whereas this is an action subject to secret, and the Village Board is the lead agency, and whereas the Village Board has close to be prepared and has before it an EAF and has identified the action as an unlisted action. Now, therefore, be it resolved as follows, that the mayor is hereby authorized to sign the EAF and that after due consideration of all facts and circumstances in this matter, the Village Board as lead agency does hereby adopt the annexed negative deck. I'm going to ask that we amend this. I don't know that we can wait until for this until they returns. So, can we amend this to say um, either the mayor or the deputy mayor is um, 
authorized to sign the EAF? Okay. When did the work, when did the break occur? I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm assuming it was before today. Okay. Uh, so a motion for the amended resolution. So moved. Thank you, Lynn. Discussion? Uh, second. 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 Thank you, Fran. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. No <coughs> Correspondence. I'm sorry, Corey. Yes. That's a um, roll call. Oh, thank you, Sandy. Roll call vote. Lynn Miller? Aye. Uh, Marie Early? Yes. Fran Murphy? Yes. Steve Velodo? Yes. And Dave Morandi? Absent. <coughs> Thanks, Sandy. Okay, correspondence. This is to the mayor and the village board. Uh, I own the building at 66 Main Street and wish to purchase a stoop adjacent to the building, bordering on the village on sidewalk. Please notify me as soon as you have established a procedure and fee structure for owner pur purchases of such property. Thank you for your consideration, Gail Reed Hanna. I believe that Gail has been told by Mary that these uh, questions uh, will be taken up at some future point in time when we establish a policy for sale of, of such property. Also in your package, uh, <coughs> a letter from Ethan Tim, uh, Mayor Mirandi and Trustee Early. I've had the great pleasure of serving on the Code of State Committee since about July of 2015. I'm happy to been, have been able to contribute in some way to the progress of code revisions. As we know, we recently welcomed our second child into the family. With that and additional professional obligations, I feel that I will no longer be able to devote adequate time to serving on the Cold Springs Code Update Committee. I do not want to leave the committee understaffed, so I'm willing to serve on the CFC until a suitable replacement can be found until November 30th at the latest. I will also help with transitioning any materials and technological items, such as the Google Docs that I've created in order for the committee to continue effectively. Thanks again for your trust and the opportunity to serve the community. Ethan Tim. Uh, Mary will uh, post a notice uh, seeking candidates for the position. That's the correspondence. Okay, minutes. The minutes for tonight's review and approval are the minutes from October 4th, 2016. Uh, any comments? This, I should point out that this uh, set of minutes was originally seven pages in length <coughs> and was cut down to two pages over pro <laughs> under protest. <laughs> no comments. Uh, motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Thank you, Fran. Uh, discussion? Second? Second. Thank you, Steve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Approval of bills? I am not through them yet. Okay, so we can't approve them. Can we wait till next week? Uh, we'll take I, think she's gotta, I think she's got to get some checks out. We'll take a recess. We'll take, it'll, yeah. It'll, 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 I'm, almost, I'm almost through them. I'm just not finished with them. Maybe 10 minutes? That sounds good. Okay. Can I just make a, discuss one thing before we yes. recess? Um, just as a note, I uh, spoke with Chris Hyatt today. Uh, he will be doing uh, leaf and yard pickup uh, <coughs> on Thursday, November 3rd. Now, this is a change they used to do it on Wednesday. We will be doing it Thursday, November 3rd. So please put out <coughs> the debris, leaf, leaf bagged and, and uh, you know, wood tied uh, on Wednesday night, November 2nd. He will do it again, or the, the uh, highway committee will do it again on Thursday, November 17th. So those are two dates for yard pickup, and they're posted on Facebook. Uh, another thing is that they will be garbage pickup on Election Day, November 8th. And then he, he, they have canceled, and we can bring this later. There will be no recycle on Veterans Day, November 11th, and no recycle on the Friday after November 25th. And all these dates have been posted on Facebook. Great, friend. Thank you. <coughs> is that a change? 
from Wednesday to Thursday? Wednesday to Thursday, and, and he did explain to me, but I apologize, that we talked about a lot of things, and there was a reason why it was better for the highway to okay. combine <coughs> to combine that with uh, something else that they do on Thursday so they won't lose. You know. Great. So, so. <coughs> okay, so let's take a 10-minute recess, and we'll come back to do approval of bills and comments. I'd like to make a motion to approve uh, bills batch number 3788A uh, in the amount of $42,116.73. Any discussion? Second? I'll second. Then thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. No one opposed? Okay. And with that, we come to the end of the agenda topics. Any comments from? Pardon me. A couple comments. Uh, first, there's one year left on the Bobcat lease. Yes. To check on. Yeah. And the south side of uh, Marion uh, is that's Donnie Yanotelli's property, so he, he plows that. Oh. So okay. that's part of uh, his lease arrangement with the tenants in the garden complex. Okay. And the final point is on the resolution the, uh, that you voted on this evening, the yeah. amendment to the rider to the HDRB contract. Yes. Uh, again, you put the village at risk because that was not a legal vote. It's a basic violation of the open meetings law. Okay. You have to post three days prior unless it's an emergency or special meeting, in which case you have to post one day prior. Mm -hmm. You just don't do it on the fly at a meeting. Okay. Thank you. to the uh, fire company, oh, yeah. it's the Department of Transportation. I ran all that information down, uh, it took a long time. I was in Washington, I was in New York, I was back in Washington, and then I ended up back in Albany again, <laughs> on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they can install signs on their building, that's fine. Okay. They have to be red on white or black on white lettering. Okay. They have to be between five and seven feet above grade. Okay. Um, and red is for buses, but they don't really want to strike the pavement anyway at this point. But if we had to, we'd have to use the same color we used like out front for the police department. Yeah, like Whatever that is. It's yellow. Yellow, yellow, orange, I don't know. Uh, but that's it. So everything's... Okay, good. Well, Thank yeah. you for following up on that. Yeah. <coughs> and I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you, Fran. All in favor? Aye. Thank you all.